everyone, so today I am back in my spooky apron and we are gonna be making not Halloween stuff, unfortunately, but it doesn't mean it can't be Halloween all year round. So I wanted to try out some new Brussels sprouts recipes. I do the same Brussels sprouts recipe every single year and I really have been loving it. It's kind of a roasted Brussels sprouts with Dijon, white wine vinegar, dressing kind of thing. It's really delicious, but I'm just kind of wanting to doctor it up a little bit, add a little something, maybe some Parmesan and a little bit of something to make it a little creamier or something like that. So we're gonna test a couple things out with this one that I already like. And then the second Brussels sprouts recipe was inspired by a stuffing recipe that I'm obsessed with, which I will link in the description for you if you're interested in this. But it is a shiitake mushroom, jalapeno, cranberry, all of the things like a little sweet, a little spicy, but like savory at the same time. It is the best stuffing of all time. And I wanted to maybe make some Brussels sprouts that were inspired by that recipe. And we're gonna see if it's any good. We're gonna make two sauces with it. I think I'm gonna do a Dijon maple sauce and a, oh, I think there was like a cherry balsamic. And uh, both of the dressings are from uh, websites as I was searching for anything out there that might be like this recipe that I was thinking in my brain. So I will link those inspirations down in the description. So now that I've talked forever, what we're gonna do, first I'm going to cut up or slice. Oh, first of all, I was gonna say, I have this little camera right here. And what we're gonna do is film What's going on down here? I know it's gonna be in the frame and that's annoying and I'm a perfectionist about it, but I'll get over it because I would like a closer up shot of what's going on on the countertop. We're gonna make this like a full on, basically Food Network <laughs> pro situation, except for not at all. So I have a bowl full of shiitake mushrooms right here that I'm gonna start slicing. I was gonna pour myself a glass of wine while I did this, but Maybe it's for the best that I don't. There was conflicting information about how many mushrooms to get. So I I just got what looked right to me. I really like mushrooms, so I wanted a lot of shiitake mushrooms. Also check out the recipes because I'm making smaller portions because I'm not trying to make a full Thanksgiving portion right now. And then by the time it's Thanksgiving, I'll be so tired of Brussels sprouts, I'll be sick about it, you know? Or if you don't like mushrooms at all, you can use bacon, or if you're vegan, you can find a vegan meat alternative. So I'm just slicing these mushrooms. I don't know, so should we talk about some things while I'm cutting these mushrooms? What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Let's talk about it. Tell me, do you have traditions? Do you dress up? Do you wear sweatpants? Kind of, you know what I mean? Like, do you just lounge around and like just watch football or chat with family, do you see your family during Thanksgiving? What do you do? Or do you work? For me, we used to host Thanksgiving here, which I have to laugh at because I don't know that I can do that again. I'm just a tired old lady. I just need a nap. I wanna eat my Thanksgiving dinner, drink some wine, eat some pie, and be in my stretchy pants, and watch a movie and crash out. Like that is my perfect like ideal Thanksgiving. Anyways, I'm gonna start marinating this. All right, so I'm gonna take some Earth Balance butter right here. Earth Balance butter, it is vegan butter, whatever butter will work. I'm gonna take like two table, two hefty tablespoons of this butter and I don't have tablespoons clean, so we're just gonna use this. And, oh, that looks good. And I'm gonna microwave it, I'm gonna melt it. And then, not like too much, like I don't want it like boiling, I just want it to be liquidy though. Is that good? Maybe put a little bit more. You can never have enough butter, in my opinion. Makes everything taste better. We're done. Melted butter. Then I'm gonna put in, first of all, a teaspoon of liquid smoke. This is liquid smoke right here. Kind of gives it a smoky flavor. And uh, since shiitake mushrooms already have that very savory flavor, it'll add a little smokiness. Let's start with one tablespoon of tamari. Use my little fork. I have a whisk somewhere, but whatever. Oh yeah, a little bit more tamari. Not measuring that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I'm gonna pour it over the mushrooms. And 
then I'm going to, I'm gonna use this fork, coat, make sure they're all nice and coated. So I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. I might need more. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this. A little bit more butter. I feel like since we're gonna roast it, it needs a little bit more butter. So my grand, or not my grandparents, my aunt and uncle came in town from, that's uh, not too hot, is it? My aunt and uncle came in town from San Diego, oh, I think it was last year. And my family, we live in the Midwest, we live in Kansas, so it's technically the Great Plains, but everyone calls it the Midwest still. I don't know. Anyways, I am just pouring this butter over the top of this. Oh, that's gonna be good. I wanna make sure when I roast it that it doesn't stick too much to the foil, you know what I mean? So we're gonna save these shiitake mushrooms for our second recipe. We're just gonna let them marinate for a little while and absorb all those yummy, smoky flavors. If you wanna let it sit overnight, that's even better. In the meantime, I need to go ahead and start the oven. I'm gonna preheat it to 375. Alright, so I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I thought I was gonna do. Since both of these recipes start the exact same way, basically you roast Brussels sprouts in olive oil and salt and pepper, 375 degrees for about 30 minutes, I'm gonna just roast them all together. And then we'll separate them later and do the different recipes. That's what I'm doing. So right now I'm just cutting off the stem of the Brussels sprouts and then cutting them in half. And if they're really big and you want to cut them in quarters, go for it. This is probably the wrong knife for this. So once I cut the stems off of the Brussels sprouts and then cut them in half, I will put them in this gallon size Ziploc baggie because we're gonna do something with it here in a second. Uh, anyways, the story I was telling, the funny story about butter that I was telling that I stopped in the middle of, I was saying that my aunt and uncle came in town from San Diego. They came in town and I, we live in the Midwest and uh, we all, we like our casseroles here. We like a lot of butter in our casseroles and we make a whole lot of casseroles. So uh, when my uncle and aunt came in town, we were having a little party for them. I think it was my uncle's birthday. It was someone's birthday, regardless. And one of my aunts brought this whole big, I think it was like a potato casserole, was some sort of casserole. And on the top, like before you put it in the oven, you know, on the top there were like all these slices of butter. Like probably like two sticks of butter on this casserole. And my uncle and my aunt were flabbergasted. They were laughing and taking pictures and like, what is this? And we were all laughing together because we all know, like it's no secret in my family how many sticks of butter everyone cooks with. And so like growing up, my mom like, I was like, your macaroni and cheese is so good. My dad's like, she puts at least four sticks of butter in it. So <laughs> I'm like, it tastes good to me. I don't know what it is about some of these Brussels sprouts, but they are not good looking. All right, we are done. All right, so now I really don't know how much oil to use, but I use quite a bit of oil because I really want it to roast up nicely and I feel like it gets really crispy when you use a lot of oil. But here I am, I'm also the girl who eats food with like 3,000 sticks of butter on top of it. So maybe don't take my word for it. I'm gonna do a fourth of a cup of olive oil. I'm gonna pour it in this bag. And then I'm gonna put in some salt and pepper. Whoa, it's a lot of salt. Maybe not. Where's the pepper? I don't know, all the salt and pepper measurements are in the recipes. <laughs> I just inhaled pepper. I shake all this up. And then some of the leaves will come loose on the Brussels sprouts, which is even better, because you kind of want some leaves coming out. I'm gonna put a little bit more salt. I'm not trying to have a heart attack or anything, but also. I'm gonna take this Pyrex dish. Oh, it has a hair in it. Get it? All right. Just dump it in the Pyrex dish. Did I seriously not have that? Okay. And here is my, you wanna spread them out real nice so they get some air. All right, so I'm gonna set this Brussels sprout situation. Let's set it over here on top of the stove for a second. What am I gonna do? This is what we're gonna do. Put my mushrooms on a pan with some foil. 
I'm gonna spread these out. Oh, it's getting late, it's like 10 o'clock at night. What am I doing? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the mushrooms in the oven, 200 degrees for, how many, 30 minutes. Brussels sprouts, 375. That's Fahrenheit, by the way, for 30 minutes as well. Then we're gonna start the sauces. All right. So about 15 minutes in, we will toss those things just to make sure they're evenly roasted. That's what we're gonna do. All right, what's next? We're gonna make up three sauces. Okay, so this is falling down. All right, I I'm. I need a glass of wine. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So the first sauce we're gonna do is the one for the, it's like a, it's kind of like a Dijon vinaigrette is exactly what it is. Oh, oh. I call these the sunflower Brussels sprouts, by the way, and you'll see because there's a little surprise, little sunflower seed surprise in here. So for this, I'm gonna do two teaspoons of Dijon. Where are you? Dijon mush. Dijon mushrooms, apparently. Dijon mustard. Just gonna... Whoa! Two teaspoons. So then we're gonna do two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. This one's just the 365 brand from Whole Foods, but you can get it anywhere. Two tablespoons. Vinegar, I love vinegar. So it's funny, my cousins and I joke that our insides are preserved because we, we were raised on vinegar. Also a tablespoon of veganaise, which I have the veganaise right here. I'll show it on the little camera. This is a vegan mayonnaise. Uh, okay, so here's the thing about veganaise. I'm putting a tablespoon in there while we're talking. So veganaise tastes more like dressing. So if you're not vegan, I would just go for dressing, I don't know which mayo that is, but go for the dressing mayo. If you are vegan, definitely go for the veganaise because it tastes more like dressing, where the Hellman's mayonnaise has that, that mayo taste, which I love for sandwiches, but for any sort of uh, casserole or dips or dressings, I don't prefer it. I prefer the veganaise, but that's just me being a vegan mayo connoisseur over here. So I'm gonna put a hefty little bit. This is probably two tablespoons. Then I'm gonna take a little whisk. This is like a cocktail whisk. And I'm going to just whisk this together. And the veganaise just adds a little creaminess to it. And this is something I'm trying new, so I don't know if it'll actually work. It looks like it's kind of curdling. So this could be bad, but I'm just gonna whisk it long enough to where, I don't know, let's maybe multitask. Here we go. Oh, now it's not curdling. It's nice and smooth. I'll show it up How close. Looks good, let's taste it. Well, it's just me eating it, so I might as well stick my finger in it. Oh, super vinegary, just how I like it. I could drink this. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. That's the number one. Sauce number two, oh no, we think we have one of these we have to do over the stove. I'm not stoked about that. Sauce number two is a tahini mustard sauce. So it's another mustardy type of sauce, but I believe this one has maple in it. It sure does. I gotta get my maple syrup out. Cutting these recipes in half because I'm making these little small batches. So this says three tablespoons tahini paste. So here's the thing about tahini. Let me just, let's have a little combo. So, Tahini is kind of expensive and I don't use it very often, like ever, because I don't make my own hummus. So what I did instead, because one time a recipe called for tahini and I didn't have any, so I just used hummus, which I always have on hand. I usually just buy it at Costco or wherever. This one's from Whole Foods. It's just original hummus. And I just scoop out the hummus and you still get that tahini flavor because tahini is in hummus. It's less expensive and you'll actually use it if you use hummus. If you don't use hummus or tahini, hummus is still cheaper. So it says three tablespoons of tahini paste. I'm gonna use two tablespoons of hummus. And this has all sorts of stuff. It's got garlic and other different seasoning in it so it'll make it even better. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. So we're gonna do one, we'll cut it in half. I barely measure, I just kinda eyeball it. It says three tablespoons of Dijon, so I'll probably do a tablespoon of Dijon. 
we're just well tablespoon and a half of Dijon <laughs> two tablespoons maple syrup so we'll do a tablespoon of maple syrup I'm kind of like I'm really not measuring this well like I'm just kind of eyeballing it we're not being particular we're not fancy here in this kitchen right, what else I feel like my mother hold on let me look <laughs> Who am I? Okay, one tablespoon of water. All right, I'm gonna do like a teaspoon of water. I, did, I can't believe I did that successfully. Some salt, pepper, and turmeric. I'm not doing turmeric. I'm, I'm just not going there. Fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. I'm just gonna sprinkle it in there. Salt, you know, I'm doing this. I'm just gonna pour it in my paw. I don't know how much that is, but that's good. All right, and then we're gonna whisk it together. This looks nice and thick and delicious. That's the best sauce. That sesame flavor takes it to another level. Oh shoot, I need to turn that stuff. Wait, wait, wait. It smells so good. Oh my God, should I have a little bite? You think I'm gonna burn myself to death? Oh my God. Bottom layer, ooh, this is crisping up nice. All right, so the next sauce is called a balsamic glaze. I'm gonna go ahead and get this bowl of glaze ready because it has to go on the stove. You really can't see much over there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get everything in one bowl and then we can transfer it. So this is saying in a medium-sized pan, add balsamic, white sugar, and cherry juice. So that's what we're gonna need. I have balsamic here. How much? I'm gonna make the full recipe just because I don't wanna mess with the thickness or whatever. It's a half cup of balsamic. One tablespoon of sugar. I don't have any tablespoons left. We're just gonna use a good old tablespoon. It'll be close. That'll be good enough. And what else? Two tablespoons of cherry juice. So my cherry juice that I'm using is this Cherry Bundy. Got this from Costco. It looks like this. Once again, we're just gonna eyeball it. I'm sure it, whoa! Okay. Whoops. It is definitely, none of those things are ready. I can't believe it's already beeping at me. All right, so we're gonna put this on the stove in a medium saucepan. So it says here that you cook it on medium heat for five to seven minutes. Mixture should bubble slightly and reduce. Take a spoon and test the consistency on how slowly it drops from a spoon. So it should be, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> so we're just gonna stir this. Take a sip of wine. I won't go too far though. Okay, whoa! Woo! Oh Lord. I just tell you that vinegar hits you, that steam hits you in the face and that vinegar gets you in the eye, it is intense. Mm. That's good. I'm gonna check on these. Let's say these are done. What are these looking like? Woo! These are good to go. All right, so those are done. Everything smells delicious. It smells like actual Thanksgiving in here. Wait, I forgot something. All right, first, I have to cut up jalapenos. All right, I got some jalapenos here, some pickled jalapenos. I like pickled jalapenos for this because I like the, you know, the vinegar, once again, obsessed with vinegar taste of the, jalapenos plus they're not crunchy or anything like that they are they're already kind of you know the texture is right for what i want them for so i 
I use pickled jalapenos when I use them in my stuffing or something like this. I'm gonna dice them, that's what I'm gonna do. And it's gonna add a kick, but we're gonna dice it up. We just wanna kinda, and you can buy diced jalapenos too if you just wanna go that direction, that's even easier. Bring over my Brussels sprouts. So I'm gonna divvy this up. I'm gonna do a small portion of, for the first recipe. So then I'm gonna divvy this one up. I'm gonna fill this bottom of this. This one's gonna be the one that has one recipe but two different sauces. I'm gonna put one sauce on one side and one sauce on the other side. This part isn't gonna matter to you unless you're making three different recipes of Brussels sprouts because I'm just trying to test out different flavors. So this little one here, this little tester, this is the one that I know for sure. I've tried every year, it's tried and true, but I'm gonna add a little something extra. I'm almost gonna make it a casserole style. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this sauce that we made or this, this dressing, whatever it is. The This is the white wine vinegar and the Dijon. And I'm gonna put it over the top. And then I'll put more than that on there. Let's put more than that. I'm gonna mix a little bit more veganaise in. You can add as much veganaise as you want. I didn't add the veganaise first and do the whole casserole in the oven because I really wanted the Brussels sprouts to be roasted. So to get that nice roast, I feel like it would just kind of look steamed and not really even that roasted doing it as a casserole. So I added the veganaise second and that way you get kind of this creamy, you can add as much as you want or add some vegan sour cream. All right, then I'm going to sprinkle some Parmesan cheese over the top. This is the Follow Your Heart Dairy-Free Parmesan. If you are not dairy-free, you can use regular Parmesan cheese. It actually mimics Parmesan in the oven, so that's good. Now that it looks all fancy and has Parmesan over the top, I'm gonna put this in the oven for until, just until the Parmesan melts basically. So five to 10 minutes maybe. I just took these Brussels sprouts out of the oven. They are nice and bubbly. You can literally hear it bubble, listen. That is the sound of Thanksgiving. Okay, gave you some Thanksgiving ASMR. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sprinkle some sunflower seeds over the top and this is what just takes this dish over the top. It, it adds this kind of nutty, but like a crunch. And these are just roasted, salted sunflower seeds. I'm not measuring this out. You just take a little handful. And I like quite a bit because they're delicious. Next up we have our other casserole dish. This one's pretty full. I'm gonna put in these jalapenos. This is about two tablespoons, I think, of chopped, canned, or jarred jalapenos, pickled jalapenos. Put that in there. You can put as much as you want though if you want it spicier or not as spicy, whatever you wanna do. Also gonna put in some dried cranberries. I'm not really too sure how much to put in there. It said I think like a half of a cup, but I don't really like cranberries that much. I just like a little something extra. So once again, I think that kind of stuff is gonna be your preference. All right, then we're gonna put our mushrooms in there. Dump them in. Going to mix this all up first. So we get the jalapenos all mixed in with the shiitake. And I feel like I'm on a freaking cooking show. <laughs> I'm going to do half of this sesame, or sorry, tahini sauce, the tahini, mustard, and maple sauce. And then half, the other half is gonna be the, uh, sorry, the cherry balsam balsamic, whatever, reduction, which is right here, and it is beautiful. Okay, let's maybe put this on first. Let's get a little drizzle going. Woo! I know I hear ya. Other side, we're gonna pour this tahini sauce over it. And they even said a little bit of both. So what if we did a little bit of both in the middle? That's what we'll do. Drizzle it over. We'll kind of cross over. Then this reduction, we have a little bit left. 
So we'll kind of just pour it down the middle. Just a little something. There you go. Now, this one is done. So we are done cooking. Everything's done. Off. We just gotta clean up. But first, I'm gonna taste test. The first one I'm gonna taste test is the one that I'm most familiar with. Sunflower Brussels sprout casserole is what I'm gonna call it. So we added veganaise and Parmesan cheese to it. That's what we did. So we're gonna try it. Let's get some a little bit of everything. Mmm. The veganaise kind of cuts some of that vinegar, but it didn't cut it so much to where you're still getting vinegar, but it is really balanced now. I'm gonna eat this whole freaking thing. That's so good. Wow. All right. <coughs> Apparently I felt the need to inhale the wine. All right, next I'm going in. All right, so I'm gonna go in for the balsamic first. So this is gonna be the sweeter one. So I'm gonna get some cranberries. I'm gonna get some shiitake mushrooms. And you know what the best part of all this is? The roasted Brussels sprout leaves. So when I was shaking up the, the bag with the oil in it and stuff, kind of got some, knocked some of those leaves loose and they kind of got really nice and crisp at the bottom. So going in. Oh my God. First of all, those jalapenos are spicy. Whoa! That shiitake mushroom with that sweetness, the cranberry, that cherry um, juice, the reduction. Wow! It's got that savory with the with that sweet. Oh man. Mmm. All right, I'm going all in with the tahini dressing now. I'm excited about this one because that tahini dressing, when I tried it, I'm gonna get a little bit of everything. See a cranberry in there. That's a good bite. That is a good bite. Look at that. Okay. Mmm. Wait, any more Brussels sprout? Mmm. Let me tell you that tahini dressing with the jalapeno is on another level. Wow, these are all really good. I don't know which one I'm gonna make. Let me get the one with the both. A little bit of balsamic. Then I gotta get a good amount of tahini. Let's do both. Both is where it's at. That's the answer. That's it. Because you get that really savory flavor of the tahini with that balsamic reduction with the tart cherry. Oh my gosh. If I had to recommend anything, first of all, this one here, this one still might be my favorite with the sunflower seeds. A fire. I don't know if this can be beat. Now that it's a casserole, it's on a whole other level. So if you like creamy, I would go for this. With the Parmesan and the veganaise and the sunflower seeds, you get that rich flavor. But if you like variety, you gotta go for this. And I would almost do it almost exactly like this if you like variety where you do half with the balsamic and then half with the tahini. Well, I don't, I think I said too many tahihihihis. But regardless, half with the tahini dressing and then mix it in the middle. Even if you wanted to drizzle both over the whole thing, you would be winning at life. This is a winner. I could sit here, I'm gonna sit here for the rest of the night. What time is it? 11 o'clock. Forget it. I told my husband I was gonna save some for him, but I don't know if it'll make it. So that is it for our Thanksgiving cook with me. And uh, yeah, anyways, I'm really excited. I hope you guys enjoyed cooking with me. Let me know any other cooking videos you wanna see, what kind of recipes you'd like to see. Just in general, I'd like to do some more of these. So yeah, uh, these recipes will be in the description box for you. If you do decide to try any of these recipes, please, I would love to hear what you think or see what you made. If you wanna hashtag Jade the Libra and I can see that you made this or just hashtag Jade the Libra if you, whatever you make on Thanksgiving and show me your meal or whatever. Anyways, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. Say hey, ghoul, hey down in the comments cause you know I love talking to you. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.